everybody welcome to happy friday for another week i'm really glad to be back with you on the couch you may have noticed that my surroundings are a little bit different today and that's because i'm going to be talking about a few of my favorite things in relation to frequently asked questions um, from the blog oftentimes i'll feature things or clothing accessories stuff around the house and inevitably i get asked where it's from I hope this will answer some of your questions. Um, first off, I'm going to start with my pearls. These are very, very popular and every time I wear these, I always get asked where I bought them. I've got three strands and I picked these up at Primark in London a couple of years ago when I was travelling through London, um, like maybe two years ago, 18 months ago. Um, they were two pounds a necklace, so I snaffled up a couple of strands. I have seen them recently. Um, I saw them last year in Singapore when I was there um, at Diva, and I know Diva in Australia have had them, and it's quite possibly something you can buy online as well. So um, that's the story of my oversized pearls and where they're from. Uh, my shrunken um, biker jacket, leather biker jacket that I love, love, love to death, is from a place called Syrup in Melbourne. It's in my shopping directory so if you scroll down to the bottom of the page you'll be able to see it. But um, I, got, I wore this endlessly last winter and I have a feeling I'm going to wear it again because it just seems to be one of those pieces that never goes out of um, out of fashion. It was about $220 from memory so it was quite a good price. Um, if you're looking for good quality leather jackets you, you'll be paying at least that um, as, a starting, as a starting point so it's very good um, value for what you're paying. The other part of my wardrobe that I get asked all the time about are these beautiful, beautiful bags um, that are both from San Lorenzo Market in Florence. Um, I picked this bag up in 2006, it's crocodile skin, um, at the market. I'd done a little bit of research online. I'd heard that you could buy really good quality leather in Florence and I think I had a Lonely Planet guide as well to help me. So if you Google San Lorenzo Market or look up your guidebooks, it'll, it, it's in there. It's a huge tourist destination. Um, so I, this is now a couple of years old but it's worn really, really well. The craftsmanship is just amazing. And my ostrich skin um, bag, my brother bought for me um, last year when I found out that he was going to Florence I implored him to drop everything <laughs> and, uh, and go to the, go back to the market. Um, they're still there to this day, you can go there any day of the week that they're open um, so if you are travelling throughout Europe and you're looking for something like this and you're going to Florence that's where you're going to find them. Um, I'm really interested in fine arts and art and, and literature as you guys know and another thing that I have been asked quite often is where my little kitschy um, spaniel sculptures are from. Um, I just adore these. Um, I'm really into kitsch as you know and I love um, porcelain figurines. Um, it's really sparked by my interest in artists like Jeff Koons um, who have built things like the um, Sculpture Puppy in 1992, which is a 43 foot tall a topiary um, sculpture of a puppy, a West Highland Terrier puppy. It's, it's incredible. You can look that up. And um, that was what sparked my sort of interest in why puppies, dogs and kitsch figurines. He also works in porcelain and plastic and things like that and magnified it to this sort of giant oversized sculpture in a similar way to say artists like Clay Oldenburg, a Swedish artist as well that kind of blows up and makes oversized um, sculptures of everyday objects. I really loved that idea and especially bringing it into my home. So when I found these, obviously I can't have a 43 foot puppy but I can have this it's from Bauhaus in Rundle Street in Adelaide. Um, they do, I believe, have a website and I think they are in my shopping directory, but they don't sell everything in store online because they told me that they have a really high turnover of stock. So if you happen to be in Adelaide, I would definitely go to Rundle Street and look them up. Otherwise, maybe give them a call and see if it's something that you can pick up. But um, these, um, they're quite heavy, they're solid cost me something like $45 so they weren't expensive and for me, I mean I love that kind of thing 
And leading on from that, um, for more kitsch, which my home seems to be endlessly filled with, is the print that um, you're looking at behind me, which is a Vladimir um, Trechikov uh, reproduction print. He painted his Chinese lady in 1950, um, and it, it was so, so popular uh, in the 1960s and 70s. It had been reproduced so many times. His popularity was only second, it's said that his popularity was only second to Picasso. So it's, it's pretty incredible that you can create, you know, such a kitsch sort of painting and artwork and it be replicated over and over. Um, it went out of fashion in the 80s and 90s, but because retro and 1950s and 60s furniture is really back, um, these tend to fetch quite high prices at auctions. Even the reproduction ones. This isn't a Trechikov original, but even though it's a, it's a replica and it's a quite good one, this is an original print from I think it's 1970s. Got a date on the back, um, so it's still you know quite worthwhile if you're into that kind of thing. I found this in um, a Salvation Army store for $25. I've always got my eye out and looking for things like that. You can buy reproduct. This came framed also. Um, you can can buy posters um, and things like that on eBay and the internet so don't be put off by thinking oh god she found it in a, an op shop I'll never find one they they definitely are out there um, and if you um, Trechikov obviously originals are going to cost you a lot of money but the replica and the reproductions like I said in the 1960s and 70s they were reproduced time and time again and a very cute little trivia a fact like a little trivia fact for you is that um, one of his Chinese ladies can be seen in Alfred Hitchcock's 1972 film Frenzy and it was also featured on the wall in um, the film 1966 film Elfie as well so if you are a bit of a film buff and you're into fashion and kitchen things like that have a look out for it because it's a really nice um, little addition to look out for. I hope that that sort of like let you into my world and where I find things. Obviously um, when I travel I do my best to find things wherever I go. I do my research before I leave um, just to make sure that I've got my you know finger on the pulse for what's going on in where, whatever city I am and even in Australia you know um, Bauhaus where my little puppies are from um, there it's a one-off shop but you know I I made sure that I did a lot of hunting around so that I could find something like that. Most things are also listed in my shopping directory at the bottom of the page. So scroll down and have a look. Um, and it, it, all of the contact details that you could possibly need will be there. I'm really looking forward to bringing you an update about what to wear for autumn winter for all my southern hemisphere readers and watchers out there. But I may do a summer wrap up as well for people up, up in the north. If it's something that you'd like to see, let me know. We do have a very mild climate here, so I often find myself in clothes that I never would have dreamt of wearing in winter when I lived overseas. Uh, let me know. As always, you can find me on Twitter, you can find me on the blog and Facebook. I am Phoebe, you've been watching Lady Melbourne TV and I will see you next week. Bye!